Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all over the world. This is episode number 421. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, we've been gone for a couple of weeks from the podcast, so it's great to be sitting in here. We're actually in here on a Sunday morning because we have um, snow predicted for this week when we usually do the, the podcast, and, and usually that day is when uh, Steph gets all of the uh, receipts out for donations, and so um, it's looking like if, if we get enough snow that she's not going to be able to do that because of other appointments during the week until the next week. So if you think it's taken longer, um, we're probably going to be a week behind on that and then getting out the end of the year donation reports. Yeah, when they, when they talk about anywhere from two to six inches and 40 mile an hour winds, that's that's just the time yeah, to hunker down a little bit. I think for our our area, it's one to three, but you never can tell. And uh, yeah. so I, we're just we're just yeah. doing this just in case because we wanted to make sure we got a, a podcast out and talk to you guys again. Uh, thank you so much for the encouragement that we've got during the time off for just sweet words and and uh, support of the ministry. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate that and. Uh, we're reminded of that at the end of the year because we're trying to get everything together. And, you know, this is the end of um, the calendar year. The secular but, year. But this is not the end of God's year. And a lot of people always, you know, say, okay, this is what's coming for the next year. Um, I think we're still in the end of, of something that God's doing about just revealing all of this, everything that's hidden. Uh, if you'll If you'll note what's just come out in the last month or so about uh, the Epstein you know, files are being released, and um, you know one of the things they're they're list they're releasing all these court documents, but you never see the flight logs, and that's I think what everybody's really after. And there's no telling whose names are on those. Well, just because they're on a flight log, though, it was a know, flight log to the island. Well, so it's you know, but I I don't know that they could prove anything. You know, I I feel so sorry for his victims, yeah, because all those years, you know, they they were um, had no justice. And I, and I know that there, there can be false accusations in all of that, and we have to keep that in mind. But, but I think what people ought to, to look at, if they were associated with this man in any way, in a casual setting or whatever, look what you were dealing with. Look what you're dealing with, and look at the uh, – there, there's, there's so much in the background that they – you know even though he was a head fund manager, if you will, they really can't explain where the money came from. And then and as soon as he went to, to prison, all the money disappeared and disappeared into a trust. And, uh, I mean, there's talk in the documents coming out about setting this one up to get blackmail material. Well, I don't can, have any it, doubt. It really sounds like a, an intelligence. He was, he was connected to one of the intelligence agencies. In yeah. my mind, <clears throat> there's no doubt about that. And I just, I feel so sorry for these young women. It's it's like people that, that have tried to bring out, you know, the occult uh, workings in the highest levels of government and um, all the all the things that have been going on all, all these years and, you know, the Illuminati and uh, what everybody thinks are just conspiracy theory. And I know in my life it's it's so difficult to absolutely know something because it's been put in front of your face <clears throat> yeah. and things that you've seen. But it's so out there, you can't get anybody to believe it. And so I've, I'm thinking that there's, through all of this, there will be justice for those Epstein victims, those young girls that were used. And I, I know it's, you know, whatever they've done in this area we're at, they've probably done on steroids up in Washington. And, and around here, there's tons of people that are compromised. I can promise you there are through blackmail. Oh, yeah. Because that's the way they control everything. If they can that's, get you in a position. That's called espionage. That's yeah. exactly what they do. And then they, and then they, especially somebody that's in a position that's important, then they can, they can cause them to, to, like if they're in the Senate – or the House of Representatives, they can cause them to vote away they want to, or you know, it's just it's really horrible. It's I think this this is such a, a good modern view of what Babylon is. It's why in Revelation, you know, God speaks of Babylon. We're we're in the last of the Babylonian days. <laughs> and you know, the, the court system is predisposed not to deal with it the moment that you bring up anything occult. I know right. that 
uh, back in the 90s when we were dealing with a lot of this, and we had some people come through that had also done consulting for several three-letter agencies. They said, listen, you, we, we can't break up, you know, and whenever they had to go to court, they had to bring it up as something else. They mm-hmm. could not bring it up as occult things because it, would have been it immediately, immediately shut down. Yeah, that's right. And isn't that a shame that, that Satan's done such a good job of knowing how to hide things. And I think that's why so many people for years have been impressed like we were to just cry out and say, Father, reveal the hidden. You know, it, because unless you have the hidden, unless you have all the secrets out, you can't even make a decision. And I think that that's what we're getting ready to see. I've thought this for a long time, but I think we're starting to see the beginnings of um, things in the churches that are going to come out. And and God will bring that out because it says that his judgment begins in his house. And so he's going to be revealing hidden things there. You know, I was thinking as we were dealing with uh, the, the topics we're going to be dealing with today, you know, between now and uh, the beginning of God's year, we, when we, after, you know, 14 days after we begin the, the new year, on you know, God's calendar, we have, we have Passover. And one of the things that is a, a practice of Passover is they would go through the, their homes with a fine-tooth comb, I mean, literally with a little brush and, and piece of paper, to uh, make sure that there was no leaven in the house whatsoever. And I think that's a, that's a word in season right now for the body of Christ that God is saying, listen, you need to get the leaven of Babylon out of your life, out of your house, because if, you know if, if God is getting ready to reveal all this stuff, he would be hypocritical not to deal with his own people first. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I think we're, we're in this season that God is going to begin supernaturally showing us things to deal with so that... As he begins to pour out the wrath, you know, it's almost like the, the, the Passover thing. They had, they had everything set in order. They had the blood over the doorposts so that when judgment went over, it didn't touch their houses. Mm-hmm. And I, I think prophetically that's kind of an, a time we're in right now is God is saying, listen, you can't play with Mystery Babylon anymore. And, it, it, it's, and I, think, I think the Holy Spirit between now and the first of God's new year is that he is going to go into overdrive to reveal uh, I, I think in, in some cases he's going to have to absolutely convict the snot out of some people uh, to get them to let go of some things of Babylon because this this logical argument isn't going to work. He has got to convict them to most where they. Uh, Jamie Buckingham wrote a book said you know God will set you free but he'll make you absolutely miserable first was the the title of the book and uh, well, and it does make you miserable it when does. you know when he starts bringing up things. Um, that you need to deal with. And I, I've been asking God and he's been doing it in the last month or so. I just, father, dig deep, (laughs) dig deep in me because you know, if you've had things happen in your life and you can't remember everything, um, there can be all kinds of, of doors open and you can plead the blood of Jesus over those doors. But, but the, the period of spiritual warfare that we're entering into, I don't want anything that can be a place where Satan can even agitate me. You know, because sometimes if, you, if you've had things in your past, if you've had trauma or anything like that, just one little thing can set you off and just, boy, put you in a mood. You know, there's, there's lots of times like, um, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that just, it it's, sounds so stupid, but there's things that will still set me off to this day, and I, and I have to work my way through it. One of them is seeing like a toenail. Now that sounds crazy, and I won't tell you the reason in my past why that that gets me so much. But I mean, I really have to work when I see a toenail somewhere, you know, that's been clipped off. I, I just almost get so angry that I can't hardly stand it. And through the years, that's got less, and I work on different things. Well, bleach used to really set you off too. Yeah, it doesn't anymore. Yeah. Um, vinegar, the smell of vinegar. Oh, you send me through the roof, and it doesn't anymore. I would put off cleaning our coffee pot because. You know, you run vinegar through it to clean out um, water scales and things. And so um, I'd put that off. But I, I've, I've made it through a lot of things. But, you know, it's like something more probably that just a normal person can relate to uh, That's that's been coming up to me here lately because I think I, I tend to do this, is the story of Mary and Martha in the Bible. We're in Luke 10. I'll just read it to you real quick. Um, starting in verse 38, it says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered 
about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? I'm laughing because I, I see myself in this. Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Um, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. And the reason that, that I think God's bringing this up to me is I am very prone to when I get up in the morning, I always say the basic prayers, but when I get up in the morning, if I have a lot of t- to do, and I'm talking like ministry stuff, I will jump and, and start in on that without that time with God, and then I end up having usually a rough day and have to have that time of God later when if I'd just done it earlier. and uh, I'm the same way. I've, I've had to learn not to check my emails first thing in the morning. Oh, if I ever do that, I'm done for. Yeah. Because, it, because, I mean, sometimes uh, people will ask either ask you questions or ask you to do something, and, I mean, it's like, okay, and you, and you rearrange my day or rearrange my mm-hmm. week or whatever, and you just have to go into drive mode just as hard as you can. And so um, I'm learning. I mean, God's been dealing with me with that. That's part of the leaven that I'm trying to get out of me is uh, in the morning because, you know, you know, my routine, I get up, and, and there's certain things I've got to do to admin for the ministry, and I'm putting off checking my emails now and until I get to the office That's, to where I have, yeah, I have that chance. Yeah, I had chance. to do that too. Because, and especially if they're people that are troubled. Yeah. Because then, you know, it's so hard not to just go into that. And, and, and then figure for, out how to fix it or whatever. Right. Yeah. And, and so even people in ministry, I think, struggle, struggle with this. And, um, and, and, you know, you can kind of see, like, of course, I guess if you keep it in the full perspective of, of Jesus is sitting there in front of you, we should all just be sitting at his feet and listening. But within those settings of that, people did have to eat. People yeah. did have to, you know, there had to be things done. And so I can I can see how Martha, yeah. I can see both sides. Well, I can too. I remember I was sitting in one yeshiva, and, and you know, Carl Koch, as he was getting a lot of these things, he was... Um, pastoring a very large it would it would be considered a mega church by today's standards if you go back in time and uh he said that he, he confessed he said you know i was i was so busy doing ministry that i found i was no longer in the ministry i was simply administering mm-hmm. real estate becoming I mean, because they had like a 25 million dollar campus and this was back like i think in the 80s which mm-hmm. would have been very substantial and it, it it is so easy for the, for that to do because the, you know, it's like with, with Martha, she saw, okay, everybody's coming. They're going to listen to Jesus. They're going to be here all day, maybe all night. And so, with so this, what do you got to do? This food you know? has yeah. to be prepared. Uh-huh. And it, it, it is so easy to get overwhelmed by the, I don't, I don't want to say mundane, but it, it's, it's the it's, task, the task at hand yeah. that we forget to have that time alone with God. That's why That's why Jesus constantly was taking the disciples aside, getting away from everybody so that they could recharge and hear from God. It was like charging their batteries. Right. Because, you know, I, I've been in situations, I know you have too, that we really need to, to do something for God and we're having to draw from reserves because we've been already so busy that we, did, that we yeah. didn't have time to have that time alone with God. And I think the devil sets that up on purpose. I really do. He said, okay, I want to keep you so busy that, that, you, that you can have this time to where you, you went. Because once you go off those reserves for a while, you, you bottom out in exhaustion. Well, I had, I had to rearrange things as the ministry grew because I was having to stay up late to answer emails, and then I was trying to schedule phone calls with people. And I finally had to come to the conclusion I can't do the phone calls because I wasn't even able to – I wouldn't have had any time to sleep. Um, and so, so I still answer emails, but I, I have to. Oh, I remember that we were, we were both sitting in the living room. You had your laptop and I had mine and it was like 10 o'clock at night and we're still answering emails. Well, I, and I had to, I still, you know, want, want to answer people and things, but I had to get that settled in my mind because I, I'm one of those, um, people that if there's something to do, I want to jump and, and get that done. And I think I've done that in my life because there's always something that just pops up out of nowhere that you got to deal with. So if you deal with what you've got to deal with, then you can handle this other. But I mean, it all comes down to, you know, for a person that's not in ministry, 
You get up in the morning, man, you're going, you got a job to go to. I can see how anybody would struggle with this. Yeah. And you're tired anyway, you know, like like a working mom. She's out there working all day. She's got to come home. you got to get supper on the table. you got to do laundry. And it is easy to get in this. And and so not to be, you know, get beat up over this if you're if you're struggling in that, because I, I struggle with it because I just, I think, okay, these things have to be done. I, and I so think, somebody's got to do it. I think that is probably indicative of modern life. That That's why, you know, when besides, you know, a lot of people needing Jesus. I mean, when you go to Walmart, you even see, the, what, and sometimes you can perceive they're believers, but they're just exhausted. They're beat down. Well, it's, it's wearing out the saints. Yeah. I mean, Satan's got a strategy for this. And and above all, we've got to we've got to choose that time with God yeah. uh, and choose that time in the word because that that's where we stay grounded that's where you know the Lord can speak to us and and show us things and and I, I'm thankful for this that as I've grown in the Lord uh, I go through my day and I'm constantly praying no matter what I'm doing and constantly listening but it's still not the same as that no. just get off by yourself where you can clearly hear hear God speak and uh, we're really going to need to hear him we are. As, as this next year goes and on. I, I, know, I think sometimes it's simple as God changing our mindsets because in different seasons of life, back when uh, I was only doing the seminary, I had, I had a, in a sense, a limited pool of people that I was dealing with to where either they could call or, or they would email, mm-hmm. and it was, okay, let's take care of that. Let's get that out of the way. But as, as the ministry began to explode, that same mindset that I had all those years with the seminary, I can't have nationally. Right. And that, that's why the, all of a sudden I've got to prioritize. Okay, this I may be able to get to this week. I may, I may have to because I've got some things that uh, I've already got planned for three weeks from now because that's when I'm able to fit it in with everything mm-hmm. that I have if I want to have that time with God. And God is, I mean, this last month or so, God has been disconvicting the snot out of me and and uh, uh, spending that time that I need. And I, I need to work on it more because I, I'm still feeling the pressure. I'm still feeling like Martha. A lot of times, and he's saying you you need to be able to say and and uh, guys, this this isn't something that's just in ministry. I'm even seeing in the corporate world, they're telling executives only check your emails twice a day, six o'clock in the morning and six o'clock at night. Otherwise, they get so inundated they become ineffective mm-hmm. in what they're supposed to do. Well, and you want to answer people's questions. Yeah, um, there's just so much right now that if you look on the internet, you can get five different opinions about, about the same it. subject yeah and so people are, have got questions and they they need to have those questions answered and that's why i think you're getting ready to do exhaustive research on a couple of subjects so yeah we were, so that people we were can watching have one and and uh, i have never seen such mental gymnastics to justify something and i, I think that's part of the uh, the works of the flesh that god is dealing with, with us about because mm-hmm. we need to go with the simplicity of the word if it's in the bible Let's do it and honor Christ. If it's not in the Bible, how about let's not do it? Because if it's not in the Bible and it was not part of the apostolic instruction, then it came in from somewhere else. And Mary, every time that I have ever run a rabbit on any of these things, the somewhere else is always Mystery Babylon. Either mm-hmm. it goes back to Jerusalem, and, and uh, even with those that get into the Hebraic roots, we've got to be careful of going back to Jerusalem now. Because when, when, they, when they separated and had rejected Messiah, it was because they had already begun to reject Moses. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, the, the Jewish community in many ways is just in bad a shape as most of the Christian community. Yeah, that's what's so, to me, so concerning about where they're at right now. You know, we've been praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We've been um, praying for, uh, you know, we, we've heard some some stories from reputable sources of the horrors that happened when those Hamas and the news will not cover it. No, they're not covering it. And so, and so, you know, when you hear that, you think, Oh, of course, Israel's going to go forth with this fervor. And, you know, they really are, are kicking up the, the things on that have happened in Gaza. And, but the truth of it is guys, I don't know how much of the news we can trust. If, you know, with some of the reports we're getting, if the general population knew everything that those people did mm-hmm. when, the, when they came across the border. The, the media could not generate any sympathy no, for Gaza. I think there anything. would just be such an outcry. And, and, it, I, and I've, I've told you, I said, I've looked at this and said, I can't believe that Israel didn't, in, in a sense, go mad 
for a distant and absolute rage, anger, and just completely wipe out the everything. The horrors of it. Yeah, the and, horrors of and it. And you know, guys, what we have to come to grips with is these horror stories of what these people did to families, just go in a home and do these things. Those are the type things I've heard that go on in the deep, in the, dark occult. In the, in the deep occult, yeah. I mean, this is demon-possessed people. This, this would have been stuff that Hitler would have taken notes on because he never dreamed of and it. And so this is why we're at such a critical time, I believe, is those same people have crossed our borders. Yes. They've and crossed our borders. And if they, if they are planning all of these, you know, I thank you guys, by the way, for praying over the airlines and things like that because I, I sense that God heard those prayers. Thank you guys because I think there were many things planned uh, during the the holiday season and and lots of travel and people gathering places, so to me the mercy of God was shown, yes. and I'm so grateful for that. Um, I still think that there's there's some danger in that area, but I also think that there's there's danger in many areas, and I think that that's why we have to consider um, getting these getting Babylon out of us. Oh, absolutely, you know, because we've had almost thirty years here of <laughs> of getting everything out. Because there's safety there. There is, and you know, just when I, I can look strategically at the border. Okay, now here's some of the things that we know. Uh, we have had terrorists coming across the border for at least twenty to thirty years. What we're seeing is the final push. Now, if you have the final push, and you're trying to bring in the major players, how do you do that at a border? You overwhelm it. Mm-hmm. You overwhelm it because it all you're going to miss the people coming through. And we, we have had border agents talk about the fact that they have uh, seen uh, uh, items that uh, that uh, Muslim terrorists would would have out. You know, so you you, you don't see a lot of uh, Islam, as far as I know, in South America. But they're they're finding that not only that, but I mean. Uh, instructions and plans and stuff because every, every once in a while they come in an area and they got to abandon really quickly and sometimes they leave stuff behind. Mm-hmm. Our, anyway, so you have that going on. I think they're working in concert with the cartels that there are major gunfights like at, with soldiers at war that our guys are down there. Our, our guys protecting the border are understaffed. They're underarmed because the, the cartels are far better armed than they are. And so, guys, we, we need to pray for them. I, you know, one of the things that, that, that thinking about this and praying about this last week or so, I, I was saying, God, if you have any Christians that are down there serving on the border, let them start moving prophetically. Mm-hmm. Let them know exactly what the yes. enemy is doing. Father, put them in the right places at the right time to get key terrorists yes. that are the generals that's coming right. across the border. So they and can see, guys, see. That's, that's why when we, when we hear God, and that's why you know, the more that you get Babylon out, the easier it is to hear from God. Well, Babylon has just snuck in so many areas of our life. It really has. And, and if you look around, um, you know, most of the things that we deal with day to day, the names of the days of the week, the names of the months, I mean, it's, it's just all come from paganism. And so we, we have to, to, part of being a warrior, and you've said this, that like when you're trained in the military, you have to know your enemy. Yeah. And you have to know how the enemy does things. And remember that, uh, wasn't it Paul Harvey that said, if I was the devil or something, I'd do things this way? And, uh, and he was spot on in that. He was. Yes. And, and I, think, I think Satan did, you know, put a strategy together with his minions, and, and they decided, we're going to do this. We're, we're going to put so much in music. We're going to put, uh, you know, this thing with Taylor Swift. Do you want to see how how the Antichrist is going to be able to woo masses? Look at the following that she has. I mean, I mean, this is this is something that that you, you is abnormal. You know, there's always people that follow singers and 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 things like that. But boy, oh boy, is this to me? This is abnormal, and we need to pray for her because she's. She's being used, and I know that there's good things that she does. You know yeah. that there's, but but for people to to pay thousands of dollars and and just, you know, all, 
<clears throat> be up, so upset if they can't get to where she's at. This is this is something tied to something abnormal. Well, I think what the enemy does is he can use something that is not directly tied into his agenda. But he's testing spirits. He's testing anointings. He's testing different mm-hmm. things to prepare uh, the population for things. You know, people, I've heard people say they think that, that there's people that are talking about Donald Trump could be the Antichrist. <laughs> Donald Trump doesn't have the qualities of the Antichrist. He really doesn't. This guy, is, he's going to be debonair. Oh, man, he's going, he's to, be going to be smooth be, as, as, as silk. He will be some someone that has the ability to draw like Taylor Swift has. Yes. There will be uh, almost a melody in his voice. Yes. There's going to be a thing that t- can just woo people. And so and super intelligent, super oh, articulate. The, that, that's why in the Shinar Directive, I, I did these two contrasts, that he is going to be the ultimate diplomat and sophisticated wearing Armani suits, but on a on the drop of a dime, he could become the most savage thing that you have ever seen mm-hmm. if you ever cross him. I mean, it's going to, there's these two dichotomies are going to be perfectly meshed together. Well, and he'll always have a team of workers that even while people are just, you know, so fascinated with him in the background he'll still be taking care of anybody that comes against him and that's that's what i wanted to to talk about is like when god's new year begins um i've heard a lot of the prophets saying that this is 2024 is going to be the year of the open door (laughs) always it rhymes um and i and i agree with that in this way um i believe that god's going to open up a door for everybody to come out of babylon yeah and I think that, first of all, there'll be people that don't want to come out. And then uh, if you can get them to walk out of Babylon, then they're, st- they're going to have to cut off those dangling shackles <laughs> that are left over. They're going to have to renew their mind yeah. to how God says to do things. And so that's what I think that God's going to provide. And, you know, we've got the scripture in Isaiah 61, 1 that I love and quote a lot. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And let me tell you something. Whether anyone knows it or not, we have been in a Babylonian prison. Yeah, we have. Uh, there is, there is, we, are, we are, and this, this is a, a, a term that when you begin to understand your Hebraic heritage, and this began to set in as little as, uh, 50, 60 years after the last apostle died of the original apostles, that with the early church fathers, we begin to see the Hellenization of Christianity. Our society is a Hellenized society. Mm-hmm. And it was a Hellenized society with a veneer of Christianity to where the morals were originally drawn from Christianity, but underneath was Hellenization. And when you look at Hellenization, all the crazy things, the, the worshiping of the old gods, um, pedophilia and and every every sexual thing that that was all a part of, of that whole mindset in society that's just the way they did <laughs> that's just because they were they were devoid of god's commandments and they're they're moving us back toward that now one of the things that god uh, this morning when uh i was tr- taking a shower and trying to get ready and stuff the holy spirit says how deep do you want me to go and i'm thinking okay because you know, I'm, I'm working on several books okay what do you mean? You know, when it comes to research, this because I, I love. I mean, sometimes I love it when God says, "Okay, go ahead and get your submarine," because I'm getting ready to take you real deep. And He said, "No," He said, "You don't understand." He said, "My people are crying out for me to judge the world." He said, "But you set how deep I go. The more that you dig deep and doing exactly what you're talking about today, the the deeper you dig for repentance." And to change back to the word, it sets the bar on how great God can judge the world because judgment must first start at the house of God. And he, he used the scripture. He said, you know, he said, I, uh, and anybody that's listened to prosperity preaching, you know, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, good measure. And he said, what? And it, actually, that verse has nothing to do with money. It was talking about kindness and stuff. He said, when my people set, the, set not only the standard, but they set the measure that if that if you will go deep and absolutely changing anything in your life to bring it in line with the word so that you're judging yourself so that you will not be yeah, judged that's a ticket because what you know god is saying listen i, I want to rip out the tears because i think we're coming to that time where the tear there's going to be the separation of the tears and the wheat the tears always erect real proud 
And the more fruit, if you will, or the more grain that's on the wheat head, the more it humbles itself and it bows yeah. so that there is this distinctness between the two. And uh, I think God is saying, listen, I want you so full of the kingdom and so full of submission to the king and walking in my ways by the power of the Holy Spirit that I can judge deep in the world because I know that no matter how much I judge, it's not going to touch my people. You see, I think that's what we see throughout the book of Revelation. That's, and we, we see it in, in different times throughout the Word of God. God is wanting to do a deep judgment in the world. And to do that, his people have to have a deep level of repentance and renewing their yeah, minds to the Word. That's right. So that's that right. if God is going to judge Babylon, you don't want to be like Achan and have Babylonian garment and some Babylonian gold buried in your tent because it will bring judgment to the house of God. Yeah. We, we need it all covered in the blood of Jesus. We need, we need to get those things out and get them out and say, God, judge me now. Help me. Help me to judge myself now. Holy Spirit, do what you're supposed to do in my life now and get me ready so that I can, from a place of absolute security in you, I can say, God, if you need to bring out a backhoe because you're going to go that deep in judgment, do it because I know it's not going to touch me because well, we I've already brought out the backhoe in my own life. We can tell that he's he's bringing the judgment on yes. the wicked. It's he's setting it up. He's revealing it, and then and then he will deal with it. And and it goes so deep. We've just seen a little of it. I'm telling you, when this all comes out, what all they've done, I can promise you that an average person is probably going to fall on their knees, whether they know God or not, because of the horrors that they're getting ready to have unveiled oh absolutely and so god has to get his people to a place to where he can use us and the enemy not destroy us absolutely. you know there's there's been things in my life that that i had no clue were was there and as as these 30 years have progressed and god take me to one level and he was so merciful so so kind to me and uh would take me one step at a time, but I look back at the way I used to be and just think, man, it's a wonder I went in a gray spot. Oh, it's yeah. a wonder, it's, I would, it's, and it's it would have been justified. Of, if the he, grace of God, the grace of yes. God, because you know we, we know that God knows where you're going to be, and that this is something that we see in the life of Abraham. There were things that Abraham got away with, you know, like she's my sister. Okay. <laughs> Uh, now you made some big mistakes. <laughs> but one of, the, one of the interesting things, the, the immediately the moment that God said, or he said yes to God, God began to treat him as if he was already the man that he was going to be at the end because that was a part of the process of getting him there. And, guys, we, we, we never want to use the grace that God gave us in the past because of our immaturity to justify our disobedience now. Because the closer we get to the Lord's return, as well as the, the more you mature in your walk, the less you can get away with. And many times it's not even God that's bringing the judgment. The enemy says, you starting to be a pain in my backside. And if I have one inroad that you haven't covered, I will take advantage of it because you're getting tactically expensive that's it. For, for me to have you around. That's it. You know, I remember one prophet uh, that's passed away now, but I was listening. He had some fascinating things that he'd gone through. And I was listening to him one day, and, and he was dealing with high-level occult. And the people there had were demonically possessed, and they started talking to him because he was really exact in a cost in the kingdom of darkness. And they said, how about if we leave you alone and you leave us alone? And I can tell you that if if that's the case, they're really worried, but they will never leave you alone. If if anybody plans on going forward with God, we've got to get everything in order because yeah. they will not leave us alone. I think what they had, they, they, they ended up in a situation of stalemate because they wanted to take him out and God wouldn't let them. And so they said, let's, let's get you at ease in Zion because any time that you come in covenant with the world or covenant with, with the occult, it's all based on a lie. Okay, give, you know, it's like give him six months or a year or two years down the road and they'll let their guard down, then we'll get him. Well, you know, in Luke 10 is where the story of Mary and Martha is. And 10, 19, up above this, because this starts in verse 38, it's 
uh, I've been given authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. And so, and nothing shall by any mean any means harm me. So you go down here, and one of the right after that, it's dealt with. Martha, <laughs> you better get it straight, girl. You better spend the time with me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying, and and that's what I've seen. That's why I've been so concerned, and and uh, I've asked God to use me through the years. Father, help me to to plead the blood of Jesus and cry out for your mercy and and pray for people if if they're in any kind of bondage like I used to be, because I know what those attacks look like. And I mean, God was merciful to us, but I mean, in the in the beginning when we were dealing with high level occult, I I am telling you, I got my lights knocked out several times and I, w- I had sicknesses headaches like you wouldn't believe nosebleeds it was no little attacks and, and especially in a time no you know god was in the process of revealing stuff mm-hmm. to us and i mean we had a, a, a in a sense a steep learning curve but it was a rapid one because mm-hmm. if we didn't learn we were dead you know that's that's why i'll look at you know how some people are are there's this long elongated process of of understanding the commandments of God and the feast of God over all the other things that the, the world tries to add. And they may take a 10 year process. I mm-hmm. mean, we had to, uh, God flipped a switch and it's, you know, is survive or not. It's, it's like the guy that says, I'm not at war. I'm not at war. And he finds himself in a foxhole. He's now at war. And see, that's, that's what I think is the difference between this coming year is I think before there was so much hidden that, People that were on the front lines were ones that knew about the hidden things and were already causing him trouble. Yeah, and so and that's where we we have been able to put the stories together that we were told with the deaths of Christians and horrible things that happened uh, because those people had come across it. Mm-hmm. Somebody come to their ministry and and they found out about some of this stuff, so they start just praying with them, and see that that interrupts everything down where where I came from, if you touched the occult, you touched the KKK, you touched the drug trafficking, you touch. So when I started praying, yeah, yeah, human trafficking big time. So when I started praying, it wasn't just one area that got affected. It was all of it. And so you can't, you can't have that in an area. And, uh, oh, and I, I want to give you a good report. Um, you know, I always prayed for the people that came after us, the ones that I knew. There were people that I didn't know, and I don't even know their names. But but some of these people I went to school with and things like that. And there was one, the time when the witch crawled in the van, um, when they were defiling the Feast of Tabernacles, and God showed me, I started praying, and the witch crawled in the van. There were people that drew... Um, drove up in vehicles around where we were because I think they were supposed to you know, kind of guard the setting as she crawled in the van. And there was one person there that uh, I just had always really liked them. I, they were older than me in school. Uh, he didn't want to be there. I major. mean, he was so, the look on his face. and But he was caught in the, the drug trafficking. Uh, and, I, and I knew it. I thought, they have forced you. And, and see, there's a lot of people in this stuff that would have didn't want anything to do with the cult. Didn't want. They're forced to because they're blackmailed. They've got something on them, and so I always prayed for him. And I thought, oh God, make make a way out. And uh, you know, most of these people that I did know died, and as far as I know, they didn't make it out. He did, <laughs> and and I found out he's in heaven. And so I remember when you found that out, you oh, glowed like a two hundred watt light bulb, and I were, couldn't keep from crying. I was so thankful that God got him out of that, and that's why my, I have compassion for people caught in this, because you know some people choose; they want power, they want, they want, you know, they're just full of devils. There's other people that get caught in this, yeah. And since you don't know the the difference, only God does. Yeah, and he can show you certain ones to pray for, but but this is not going to be an easy year. I don't know if if there's prophets out there saying that it is, and I'm not saying God's not going to do great things. I think it's going to be miraculous things that He's going to do. I think we're going to see healings like we've never seen, but but this is this isn't going to go easy. God's God's getting ready to wrap some things up, and so the old enemy's going to fight with everything he's got, and so I I know that for me. 
you know, during the month of December, man, I was, I was digging and it wasn't easy. <laughs> you know, it wasn't easy because a lot of things uh, happened so fast in my life that when things would come up, like where I had a wound or things like that, sometimes I just had to God band-aid it so I can keep going. I had I had too much I had to deal with, so I had to band-aid it. And so I think some of those band-aids were taken off, and I was able to get even deeper healing because I don't want any wound in me to stop me from being able to do what God wants. And so he's doing that right now. This is a really good opportunity uh-huh. for us to, because it's not the end of God's year. No. And, and, and he, I call this the winding up months. And so, so if we just ask God, God, show us things. Because he's so merciful, he, he will. And even, you know, one time, um, one of the people that was in my family, that all this stuff started bubbling up. And, and they thought it was, it was something bad about me when something came up because they felt dirty. And, and I tried to memories, explain, yeah. listen, nobody's going to remember this kind of junk this horrible stuff, and feel okay as it comes up. You're not going to be sitting there, oh, well, I just feel so wonderful, and I feel like the Spirit of the Lord just here, and, and I just feel like singing. You will, at a point, when you get free of it, you'll, you'll praise God and feel like singing. But when you're going through it, yeah. see, that's, that's where a lot of people quit, Mike. Well, is, they, is God will do. give them a door open, and they, they, can, they walk out that door, and they say, praise God. But then their shackles... And ties back back to Babylon, and you and you've got to feel the yuck of Babylon, and then you're going to get to the victory. But no, you're not going to remember something that happened that is so wicked and so vile, and not feel the yuck of it. I mean, most of the things that that I had to remember, I mean, you can testify to this. It, it was pretty yucky. <laughs> it was, you know. We of course we have found out, and and uh, a lot of this draws from psychology from people that have dealt with this stuff. That. Uh-huh. Uh, your the cells of your body will retain mm-hmm. the memories of trauma, and so if this if any of this stuff comes up, your body begins to react mm-hmm. as if you're going through it right now. And you know sometimes the only way to get over something or to move past something is to go through. And and the thing is, God is saying, okay, whatever it is, you know, it may be that God brings up a memory and is something that you need to deal with, that you need to plead the little bit of Jesus into. It may be that uh, for some, as, as he is dealing with Babylon in your life, all of a sudden you'll begin to feel how God feels about it. And all of a sudden your paradigm begins to change and you feel the yuckiness of it. Well, and just uh, and, the event that you've went through. Yeah. And, and it's the same way if you, if you deal with like unforgiveness. You know, a lot of a lot of times you'll just put that off because when you start thinking about it, all the yuck comes up with it. You're angry, you're hurt, and you've got to work through all that emotion to get to that place. And that's the best time to forgive. It's mm-hmm. it's not when it's not when it's all sunny outside and, and you feel like Mary Poppins or whatever. You know, just run around everything is wonderful. It's when it, when it's in the heat of that coming up and the devil's because what you know what the devil's saying is listen you're getting ready to do something tomorrow for god so i'm going to stop you today and so he brings it up and all these emotions and everything comes up now you're now your priesthood kicks in and says i'm going to crucify this thing mm-hmm. i'm going to i'm going to pull it up by the root and i'm going to take it to the altar and i'm going to set it on fire with the fire of the holy spirit until it is completely consumed this this is the time to deal with it and so a lot of times god says listen to get it up you have to feel the depths of it to bring it to the altar Mm -hmm. and then the good news is is once you make it to that point then the past is cut off from you yeah then then you're truly your, your past has, you've been set free from your past. Then you go back to the brazen altar, you wash your hands and your feet so that, and your face so that there's not even the dust of it on you. Then you can look into the perfect law of liberty and see yourself free of it. Mm-hmm. And that, boy, is that a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. You know, and every, every step you make toward that, you know, we're more free. And, and I really think, and I've said this before, but I really think that the mercy of God has, has kind of stalled us through the years from from being used like the gifts in our life and different things like that because once you come once you come against um the kingdom of darkness and you interfere in a significant way through prayer through just praying with somebody then you become a target oh you do and you know i, I have found too that 
you know, there there have been times we, we've in, in in our history in the church that people are crying out for the glory of God to fall. And now, once we discovered some things, we're thinking you guys aren't ready for the glory to fall because we'd have a lot of Ananias and Sapphires being carried out. I want to I want the glory to be able to fall, and there's no resistance in God's people. Mm-hmm. That it feels like home. Now, you know, if you and I and you know, you and I have experienced that to a certain degree. But if and but you know, on a scale of one to ten, maybe it was set at a two. You get up to a, a seven, eight, or nine, and that feels like home. I I, I think that um, it will cause us to have a longing for heaven, like we've never believed. Because when, when you get into that level of the glory of God, all of a sudden you begin to sense when you're outside of it, out in the world, all of a sudden for the first time you see how yucky the world really is. Yeah, And, and we're getting ready to see it in front of our eyes. God's revealing it. And it's going to be hard to deal with. If you hear any noise, it's our Peppy Mercy's in here with us in the podcast studio. And she was taking a nap, but now she decides she's running around and jiggling her collar as she shakes. <laughs> so that's what the noise is. Um, she's, our, she's our ministry master. <laughs> uh, but... We, we are so thankful that God has, has given us such wonderful listeners, and we, we appreciate you guys so much. We want you to um, go into this year armed and ready to go with whatever God has for us, and I, I believe God's got a, a great plan. Uh, it just at the same time, the enemy's going to fight it with everything he's got, and I know that God's given us everything in his word we need to be victorious. Yes, it is. Well, Father, we just ask that you would go deep in our lives. Father, that the Holy Spirit would be the hound of heaven, that he would hunt down the things in our life the enemy can use to stop us from doing what you need done in the earth. Father, and we choose, yes. once, you, once you see it, Father, we covenant with you to judge it yes. and help to us. get rid of it out of our lives Lord. and to replace it with the kingdom. Father, with every one of these, we're going to get a spiritual upgrade that there are, that we show us everything that has held us back because I thank Father that in the anointing that you're releasing is not only to deal with this, but when it's dealt with you will cause us to grow in an accelerated rate to bring us to where we needed to be, even though the enemy has used everything in his power to keep us from getting there. Father, deliver us. Help clean us, Father. Let us, let us be like the children of Israel that came to Mount Sinai after being in Egypt, and you had them mikvah, you had them wash or bath. That's where we get the whole thing of baptism. They mikvahed for three days, which meant, it is, as, as far as I'm concerned, they spent three days making sure that everything that what Messiah would have done for them in the three days in the grave was actually done. Oh, thank you, Father. Father, us, that, that we, can, we can walk in resurrected mm-hmm. life, that we can walk in resurrection power, help that we can walk clean. in the kingdom of God. Yes. Father, there's so much you want to do through all of us. Father, set us free so that you can do it, and the enemy can, cannot interfere. The enemy cannot derail us. But, Father, let us become a force for good in the kingdom of God in the earth, we ask. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.